Travesti. Travesti do momento do
Thank you. Hey, Church, welcome to you today. I don't want to push up, but if you have anything to say, just no. All right, God bless you. Thank 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 Amen. We thank God for it today. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. We thank God for all of you today. God, we are with us. Amen. We pray. Now, I want to have your Bibles. Uh, we, we're going uh, to have our scripture reading for today. Those that are able to stand for the reading of God's word, please do so at this time. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. To be with the Lord, which is far greater, is far better. But right now, I guess the Lord feels that it's easy for me for me to remain. I had to choice. I go ahead and be with the Lord. I got, I got happy thing. That's all. We can talk for another five minutes. I got happy with that. So I thank God. Our scripture read will be coming out of Matthew the 13th chapter. Matthew the 13th chapter. We're going to be reading verses one through nine. Matthew the 13th chapter, verse 1 through 9. When you have it, say amen. 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 Matthew the 13th chapter, starting at verse 1. Say the same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no roots, they withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. May the Lord have blessed you for being
time of service or of giving, Lord. Even that that you have yet given us, Lord. And Lord, you call us to be stewards over that that you have given us, Lord. The resources that you have provided for us. So we thank you, Lord. We ask God that you will bless this offering, Lord, Lord, as it be used, Lord, for your purpose, for your will, even for the ministry. And we thank you right now. We give you honor and glory. Let's go to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This is how we have our announcement from our sister Ron. Let's go to the
those things which are above where Christ is on the right hand of God. Our mind is on higher ground where Christ is. Y'all give the Lord a hand, praise Amen. Who is the Lord a hand? We thank God for all that has been said and done. We thank God for the praise to Y'all give him a hand, praise Amen. Amen. God for this day. Amen. I thank God for a, a sunny, dry fall day. We've been yes. getting a lot of rain this past week. Yes. And I thank God for the dry day that we got yesterday. It was a bit windy, but it was all right. Yes. We made it through. We thank God for all those that came out, yes. uh, you know, to, to support that event. It was a, a, a need for it's a need for event. Something that needs to be commemorated. A lot of folks don't understand how important the black migration from the south to the north was. And it helped the, 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 the industry, the industrial world. It really helped the industrial world. But they would shut down after World War II. They didn't have enough, enough labor. But thank me to God that he made a way. He made a way. And I thank God for that. So we want to we wanna give glory to all, all to whom glory is due. God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ in all things. Blessing us with his Holy Spirit. Be able to understand those things that are freely given unto us. But we want to walk through this word as always. Because a lot of times we, we get caught up in our emotions when we see folks not coming to faith and repentance. And it, 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 it can get emotional for a lot of us when we know that this world is headed for damnation and destruction. And a lot of times we see in the churches folks trying to come up with new ideas to draw people into, in, in, into the kingdom. You know what? If the word ain't going to do it, nothing else is going to do it. The word don't draw them in. All other methods won't draw them in. Jesus said concerning in the book of, of Luke, around the 16th chapter, when the rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being tormented in these flames, he said, if you would just send Lazarus to warn my brothers not to come to this place. And, 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 and he let them know. And he said, then will they, then will they believe, in other words. Jesus let them know if one comes from the dead. They don't believe. He said they have Moses and the prophets. He said, but if you send Lazarus, then they'll repent and not come to this place. Jesus said, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they believe if one come from the dead. If the word don't do it, nothing else can. So we're going to preach and teach the word of God. Amen. It ain't nothing wrong with the word. We're going to see what's wrong. We're going to see what's wrong. So folks coming up with all types of methods to try and draw folks to come to church. But Jesus made it plain. You can have a man, I heard a preacher preaching this one time. You can have a person coming straight out of hell with his head on fire. Saying, y'all don't want to go to that place. They'll think it's some type of trick or gimmick. And are still, and are still move toward that direction. But Jesus said, if one comes from the dead, they still will believe. You know that, know that to be true? Because he came from the dead, they still don't Come want to on, Got eyewitnesses yes. of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You had a bunch of cowardly men that fled on the day that he was arrested. But when he rose from the grave, now they got the boldness to be able to speak because they know that he rose from the grave. Yes. One did come from the dead and they still don't want to believe. Yes. So if the word don't do it, all the gimmicks and everything else ain't going to do it. Amen. You can bring all the clowns you want, it ain't going to do it. Right. You can bring all the entertainment you want, it ain't going to do it. Yeah, it'll bring, them, it'll bring them in to, to, to be entertained, but that word is what they need to penetrate that heart. That word is what they need to deliver them from sin and damnation. So we're going to see what the word of God has to say. We're going to see what the Lord has to say about these things. Because I know a lot of, a lot of churches have, have gotten, uh, 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 they have gotten weary with a lot of the pews being emptied out and, and not filling the church out. But ain't this what the word of God said? That there'll be a falling away. Not only will there be a falling away from sound doctrine, there'll be a falling away from folks who want to even get to know the true and living God. Amen. This is part of the great falling away. The word of God is going to stand. He said there is going to be a falling away. Not only is there a falling away from sound teaching and doctrine, but there's a falling away from folks even have interest in the God that created them. Yeah. We're going to see what the word of God has to say about that. We're going to see what the word of God has to say about that. That being said, Matthew the 13th chapter in our scripture reading. In our scripture reading. And before we read that, do you understand that there has, God has always used... Uh, uh, Symbolism in this word to bring out a spiritual truth. Parables are nothing but 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 uh, uh, stories with a real truth, that with a spiritual truth behind it. And Jesus, even in the Old Testament, was doing what was done from the Old Testament. God used the same uh, way to bring out a spiritual truth in the Old Testament when He told people to break up their fallow ground. Any of all, uh, if, if any of you have been farmers or ever farmed the land, 
You know if you want to plant some seeds, you better break that ground up. Amen. You better break that ground up. Yes. You don't break that ground up, you ain't going to produce the harvest that you desire. Yes. You ain't going to produce the harvest that you desire. The one thing I know about the Word of God is not only the seed. The Word of God is not only the seed, but the Word of God also is what we use to water itself. And the Word of God is what we need to weed, as we say, weed and feed. The reason why a lot of folks ain't taking heed to the Word of God, they got a lot of weed in their heart. Yes. They got a lot going on in that heart. But we're going to see what, what the Bible has to say about this. But then go real quick. And we're going to get back to our, our passage in Matthew. But get go to Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, real quick. Amen. See what the Word of God has to say. Because God has always referenced the heart of people as a land that needs to be tilled, that needs to be broken up. Some of these, uh, uh, sometimes land just lays dormant, hasn't been harvested. Haven't been planted, haven't been, been tilled, and it's just laying there dormant. But in Jeremiah the fourth chapter, go there real quick. Amen. Jeremiah the fourth chapter, God has always referenced the heart to uh, has referenced the heart as being a piece of ground that needs the word planted in it. That needs to be broken up in order to receive the word. But in Jeremiah the fourth chapter, and we're gonna get back, get back to our, our scripture passage in Matthew. Look at what the Lord said to the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 4, chapter verse 3, it says, For thus said the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your foul ground, and sow not amongst them thorns. And that's the problem with a lot of people. We're going to see that in the parable. A lot of people, when that word goes forth, they got so much thorns in their heart. A lot of thorns in their heart. We're going to see what the word of God has to say about that. That is choking the word of God. Yeah. Out of their hearts. It's, it's, it's not producing because if you know of some, anything about weeds, they don't grow anywhere. Yeah. It can be a drought. Weeds still grow. Yeah. Yes. They yes. still them some them things that when that weed is in your heart, it's strong. It's hard. It's, yeah. Them things got some deep roots. Yeah. Yeah. And you can weed and feed and weed and feed. Stop weeding and feeding. They're going to grow. They're going to grow. But that's why you need to constantly feed our hearts with yeah. the word of God. Yeah. With the yeah. word of God. But that's what he was saying in Jeremiah. The fourth chapter. God has always referenced the heart of men and women to a piece of ground that needs to be broken up. That needs to be bro broken up. He said the same thing in Hosea. Go real quick, fast forward to the book of Hosea. Hosea the 10th chapter. Go there real quick. Hosea the 10th chapter. Hosea the 10th chapter, verse 12. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. Hosea the 10th chapter, verse 12. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. That's ground that has not been tilled. Yeah. It's untilled ground. Yeah. Uh, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And that's the problem with many folks. They ain't seeking the Lord. Their hearts have been so hard, so hard through life that they will not receive the word of God. They will not receive. And I know a lot of times we get weary. Talking to some of our sons, some of our daughters, our grandchildren. And we get weird, some of our friends and neighbors and co-workers. And you wonder why they're not receiving this word. You, you think it's so simple. Don't they understand? How come they won't believe? But the Lord Jesus is going to give a parable and we're going to see. He gave a parable and we're going to see the reason why folks don't want to receive the word of God. That being said, go back to the book of Matthew. Amen. Book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. In our scripture reading verses 1 through 9, Jesus gave a parable. And the disciples asked him in, in verse 10, why speak unto them in parable? Because I've been speaking openly to him, Jesus is going to explain. Jesus has been speaking openly and plain to the, to the people of Israel, and they did not want to hear him. Their hearts were completely hard, completely hard. Some, some, some even though their hearts were completely hard, they just had other things that, they, that, that was going on in their life that was more important to them than God Woe unto those to whom God is the least important thing in your life. Because you need him. The Bible says by him we live, move, and have our being. Without God, you can't do nothing. He is the most important thing in your life. Whether you believe it or not, he is the most important thing in your life. Whether you believe it or not. But Jesus uh, broke down a parable to his disciples. And verse 10 it says, And disciples came and said unto him, in Matthew the 13th chapter, verse 10, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, the hidden truths of the kingdom. But unto them it is not given. 
For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Jesus said, I done gave them enough light to repent in and of their sins right now. They didn't have enough truth that had been given to them to repent, and they have rejected the light of the truth that I have given unto them. And I'm going to take away that truth out of their heart if they keep hardening. Okay. Remember what he did to Pharaoh? All them signs and wonders he was doing in Egypt, and Pharaoh kept hardening his heart and kept hardening his heart. Then finally the Lord said, Now I'm going to harden his heart. He wanted a heart. I'm going to show what a real heart, how a heart can really be hard. You don't want God to harden your heart. While it is yet, Amen. while it's yet tender, receive the engrafted word. Amen. Receive the engrafted word while your heart is yet tender. Receive God's word. And this is what we need to understand. You, we don't fail. This is what people, we get discouraged when we see folks not coming to faith. You ain't there. It ain't nothing wrong with the seed. They just got some bad hearts. It ain't nothing wrong with the seed you're planting, mother. It's the ground that is being thrown out. God created the seed and God don't create nothing bad. Yeah. Amen. God created the seed, it's the ground. Yeah. I know some folks say, didn't God create the ground? You can harden the ground. Yes. You can harden that ground. Yes. But but it's nothing wrong with the seed. I don't care what nobody say. It, 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 you can come up with all types of methods without compromising God's word. Yes. If that ground is not prepared to receive it, there's nothing you can do about it. God has to, has to bring them to faith and repentance, but he's only going to do that when they humble themselves. Yeah. When that heart is humble, oh, while that heart is tender, yeah. but God will not do anything with a hardened heart. The Bible says God resists the problem, he resists the heart, yeah. and give grace to the humble, and he gives grace to the humble. So we're going to see what the word of God has to say, say about this. So Jesus is going to explain to the disciples why, what the parables mean, what the parables mean, because the word of God go forth. And it ain't the seed, which is the word, that's bad. It's the heart. Yeah. Remember Jesus said in around Luke, the seventh chapter, somewhere around there? He said, John the Baptist came preaching. If you knew John the Baptist, John the Baptist was a rough preacher. Yeah. <laughs> he called them vipers and everything else. Who had warned you to flee the wrath to come? Yeah. I mean, John the Baptist came rough and hard. Yeah. He came straight to the point. Yeah. Repent. He came straight to the point. And John the Baptist came neither eating nor drink. In other words, he was a Nazarite. He didn't come eating certain foods and he didn't come drinking wine. Right. They didn't come drinking wine. And, 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 and rather than them receiving John the word, word, John the Baptist, the message that he was preaching, nor that he was a Nazarite sent from God, even Herod, not Herod, but uh, yeah, even Herod, yes, even Herod, knew John the Baptist. He knew John the Baptist would be a holy man. Yes. He said that when that, when that old wicked wife of his sent that seducing daughter in there to dance before him, right. and all due respect, some of this dancing ain't good. <laughs> Not all of it is good. Not all of it is good. Some of it's okay. You know, some of it's okay, but when they get to squirming like some snakes on the floor, that ain't always good. Some of that stuff ain't good. But, but got the dancing before hair, and this man got so caught up in his lust, he wanted to sleep with his own step. Though I give you half the kingdom, just come to bed. Yeah. That's something wrong with that. Yeah. All these guys ain't good. There's nothing wrong with it. I ain't got a problem with it, but some of it is seductive. Yeah. Some of it is, can be very seductive. But, but, but hair knew John the Baptist to be a holy man. Yeah. He, he took him to be a holy man. But, but, but even John the Baptist, the way he came preaching, rough. He, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't sitting with a bunch of folks sitting around eating and drinking. All right. He just did what God sent him to do. He had one focus, to preach the message that God oh, sent him to preach. Amen. Amen. And they said, and because he did not come eating or drinking, when you get a chance, read Luke around the seventh chapter. Amen. Verses 31 through 34, when you get a chance, read that. Jesus said, John the Baptist came neither eat nor drink. He didn't come eating certain foods, nor did he drink any wine. He wasn't sitting around uh, uh, socializing and everything else. He had one focus on his mind to get this message out. Amen. Get this message out. And they said about John the Baptist, he has a devil. Something wrong with him. He don't want to eat with us. He don't want to drink with us. And, and look how he dressed. He dressed in uh, uh, leather, got a leather garment and wool clothes on. He eating locusts, eating bugs. Something wrong with him. He just got a devil. But he preached Amen. The message of the king. Amen. And they rejected him. Jesus said, but the son of man no, no, no. can't eat and drink it. I sat with y'all, I ate with y'all, and y'all still don't want to receive this message. Amen. What Jesus was saying, no matter what way you bring the message, as long as you ain't compromising, if they heart and prepared to receive it, ain't nothing you can do about it. If Amen. Jesus couldn't convert them, and John the Baptist couldn't convert them, and we know 
that they were both sent by the Father. Yes. Both by the Father, neither compromised. If they didn't receive John the Baptist and his in his method of preaching and Jesus in his method of preaching, what makes you think you change it? The way to draw people in the church is going to get them converted. On, Preach now. the word. Amen. Yeah. Preach the word. And that's what he was saying. It don't matter. I came, I came eating and drinking. I sat with you. I socialized with you. I had a good time. If I can put it to you that way. But y'all said that I was a wine bitter and a gluttonous man. John didn't come eating and drinking. Y'all said he had a devil. So I ate and drink with you. Now you're making excuses saying I'm just a, a gluttonous man and a drunk. And a drunk. So they didn't want to receive it neither way the word come forth. Some of these preachers come high. Now folks want to talk about the preachers. The, the hell and, 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 and fire preachers that get to sweating and are loosening their ties. Got to take their jackets off. Sweating and wiping their heads. They want to reject them. But they preach the hell out of folks. But they preach the hell out of folks. If my wife was here, she'd give a testimony concerning this. She was being preached to. This is before the Lord saved. She was being preached to and preached to and preached to. But so, for some reason, that word wasn't penetrating her heart. She said, I didn't get nothing out of it. I didn't get nothing from that. I didn't get nothing out of it. She kept saying that. And then one day, God sent a man by the name of John Cox. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I got, a, I got a daughter out there. I got to bring her to the king. And he came and preached, what in hell do you want? Oh, he preached that message. All these folks don't want to preach about hell. He preached the message. What in hell do you want? That message drove so deep in her heart and took root that a woman that used to carry a gun, that used to carry a dagger, that used to cuss like a sailor, that used to sell crack cocaine, repented of it all because she didn't want nothing in hell. What in hell do you want? What in hell do you want? Ain't nothing in hell good for you. Trust me, nothing in hell good. But yes, one day that man came and preached, what in hell do you want? And save her eternal soul. That's the question I'm asking today. What in hell is keeping you from believing the word of God? Amen. From believing the word of God. Break up that foul ground. Break up that foul ground. But Jesus was explaining this parable to his disciples. And we're going to see what these parables mean. Uh, Matthew the 13th chapter. We're going to read verses 18 to 23. Then we're going to see how Jesus broke down the, the, these, the uh, message of the seed sower. And Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 18. Look at what it says. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. Thank you. Yes, Lord, for your word. When anyone hears the word of the king and understandeth it not, then cometh that wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed. By the wayside. This is he. Then what he's saying when those swords went out to sow. Now they had pathways out there in a lot of those fields that was hard for them to walk on. And when you go sow and see, it, that seed go everywhere. Any of y'all have ever planted some grass seeds in the yard? Amen. When you use that, 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 that uh, seed thrower, them seeds just go everywhere. They go all over your car, your driveway, everywhere else. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no grass going to grow in your driveway. It ain't going to grow in your car. It just go everywhere. This is that hardened ground. Folks' hearts are so hardened against God that you, that you can preach to blood, sweat, uh, blood as a, 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 a sweat of coming out to a pores like blood, yeah. and they still will receive. It. But that word is going on in that heart so hardened that it will not receive. Where they harden as God, ate, ate, uh, evolution has hardened the heart of so many people. Amen. Yeah. It has hardened the heart of so many people. They don't even want to believe anymore that there is a God. Right. But I thank God for his word. He says the heavens yes. declare the glory of yeah. God. Yeah. And the firmament, yes. the works of thy hands. Thank you, Lord. He said creation glorify God. Let yeah. you know there is a God. You can't tell me. When, they, when them scientists looked back and saw all the galaxies with them high power uh, telescopes they got. And they saw that there's a whole lot more stars than we thought. And they all grouped together in certain galaxies. And yeah. by the way, they all going in a rotation, in, in an orderly rotation. Yes, they're able to see all that. They know there is a God out there somewhere. Yeah. They know that there is a God out there somewhere. Yeah. They know there is a God out there somewhere. I remember when they first uh, 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 launched into outer space. And the man, I forgot what, what, what the name of that, air, that uh, rocket they was on, that spacecraft they was on. And when they saw the glory of the of God's creation, the earth and the, the being able to see the whole earth and everything else, they started quoting the first verse of Genesis in the beginning. Yeah. God created the heaven. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
again, if y'all ever get a chance, watch that little short film. They said, in the beginning, God created that. They knew it had to be a God out there somewhere. And so, yes, but that's what happens when a heart is so hard. And evolution has hardened the hearts of so many people. They don't want to receive the word of God. But if they don't believe in a God, they ain't going to receive the gospel. If you don't believe that there is a God, you won't receive the gospel. And their hearts have been so hard. Has been so hard, and, and you know another way their hearts have been so hard because of because so much tragedy that have happened in their life over the years. Yeah. That's another that's another reason why some of their hearts are so hard. They can't believe well if God was really real, why did He allow this to happen? God didn't do it. Why did God do this? Why did God stop this? God gave mankind a choice. That's right. Yeah. Now instead of blaming God, don't you blame the man that did what he did, or blame the woman that did what she did? But why do everybody want to put the blame on God? If God truly exists. Why this? And why did God say it, it is appointed unto man once to die? He didn't tell you when, where, how, but he let you know you're going to die. So if, if your loved one died, don't put the blame on God. He told you it was going to happen. Amen. But they get so hard. If, if God is real, how come he let my mama die? Your mama lived 99 years, man. Amen. <laughs> why did he let my mama die? She was a good one. She lived 99 years. I'm, I'm sure she was ready to go. Amen. Especially in this world, especially if you came up in a world where you have all this immorality. Especially if you came up in a world where you have all this violence. Especially when you came, if you came up in a world where you had to have all this cussing and fussing. But she's 99 years old. You cry for her blaming God. Why did God let my mama die? She done lived 99 years. Thanks be to God, she lived 99 years. All of you blame instead of blaming. Instead of blaming. Amen. Trust me. Sometimes you get to the mother was probably rich, a God fearing woman, ready to, and she been get, putting the word of God in you all that all your life. You've been putting the word of God. Here she's 99 years old. God decided to bring my daughter on home. She didn't suffer enough down there, and that body it, 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 it done wore out. She done got tired. And if you would have asked her, I'm ready to go. Y'all yeah. ever been, been been in a room with somebody that was ready to go? Why is yeah. God taking so long? Yeah. He said, I'm ready to go. Why haven't God taken me? Your mother was 99 years old. If she knew the Lord, trust me, she was ready to go. Yeah. She was ready to go. I'm, I'm sure she was ready to go. I'm 53 and sometimes I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Like I said, I'm in a straight between two. To be with the Lord, which is far better. But I guess God feels that it's still needful for me to remain. Yeah. Still needful for me to, be, to remain. So, and so they want to blame God. So when tragedy come in their life and heart and things happen, they harden their hearts against God because if God was real, that wouldn't have happened. The man was real that did it. The woman was real that did it. God is real, and He gave mankind a choice to choose between right and wrong, good and evil. God didn't create us robots. He made us with a will to make a choice, a free will to make a choice. But we want to blame God all the time. We want to blame God all the time. Now here it is, verse, verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Yes, it, when it falls on that hardened heart because of what's been going on, what's been taught in schools with evolution, what's been happening in this world with all the tragedies, folks' hearts have gotten so hard against God, they don't want to believe in God and they don't want to receive the gospel. And that's the reason why you can preach to some of these folks and witness to some of these folks and they'll never turn. They'll never turn. Their hearts have gotten so hard. It, 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 it'll, take, it'll, take the, it'll take God himself to reach into that heart and squeeze it until he break up that hardness from it. And give him a heart of flesh. I'll remove that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That's what happened to us one day. God gave a promise. To the property of Ezekiel, he said, I'm going to remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Amen. Thanks be to God. When we humbled ourselves, he removed that heart of stone. He yes. gave us a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh. Something that was able to be penetrated. Amen. Something that was able to be penetrated. In verse 19, when one hears the word of the kingdom and understand it is not. Yes, there's people that can't understand. There's certain religions why folks hang on to their religion. Because they can't understand what type of religion is this. Well you, well, 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 you ain't got to work for your salvation. You mean God going to give you salvation free? The Bible says, for by grace are you saved. Amen. Faith in that not even saved. It is a gift of God, not a work that's any man should boast. Yeah. So people say, well, if you ain't got to work 
Why y'all live the way you live? You live because we obedient children. Yeah. 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 We have to give glory to God that is able to yeah. save yeah. our soul. Why you live the way you live? Because we know we don't agree with God that will deliver us from hell and that is why you live the way you live. Because we are those who love you so much we want to be sent with all our heart, soul, mind, and soul. Yes. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not in yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But this is what he went on to say. For you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. And to good works. When God recreated that, that heart in you, you desire to do good. You desire to do good. And I thank God for that. When, when, when God recreated that heart in you, we desire no longer to be fornicated. We desire no longer to be drinking. We desire no longer to be cussing and fussing. We desire no longer. To run to those clubs where ain't nothing good going on. We desire no, no longer to be so hateful and bitter and angry and vengeful. We desire to please God because Amen. God recreated us. Amen. 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 Christ is a new creature. So I thank God. Thank you, Lord. I truly thank God. Verse 20. But he that received the seed into in stony places, the same as he that hear the word, and with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended. In other words, they fall away. Why do some people that you seen come to church be in time past used to talk about the Lord when they first got saved until persecution arose, until trials and tribulation came to yeah. The Bible says, according to Jesus, because they have no roots in their hearts. Yeah. Look at that again. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hear the word in a nine with joy, received it. They received it. The preacher went forth preaching. He preached them happy and everything else. He preached that, that, that you can make it to heaven. He preached that you can go to glory. But he didn't preach, count up the cost. <laughs> he didn't preach, count up the cost. Too. He preached everything but count up the cost. He preached if you if you love, did preach if you love father, mother, brother, or sister, son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. He didn't preach that to him. He preached the glorious kingdom. He preached the glories of heaven, but he didn't preach the fact that you're gonna be tried and persecution and, and, and suffering gonna come. So that was happy. Everybody happy about heaven. Everybody happy about uh, 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 being going to a nice vacation place, as they say. You know, heaven's that eternal vacation place that they're gonna believe, they believe that they're gonna go to. But they didn't understand to get there, there's gonna be some trials. There's gonna be some afflictions. There's gonna be some suffering. Wait a minute, preacher, you didn't tell me about all this. You told me that once I give my life to Christ, I can go to glory and I'd be in the presence of the Lord for eternity. But you never told me there was gonna be trials. We sing that song. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. And I thank God we ain't telling you that the road would be easy. But we did tell you there's going to be trials. We did tell you there's going to be persecutions. We did tell you there's going to be suffering. We did tell you there's going to be affliction. But it's going to be worth it all when you see Jesus. It's going to be worth it all when we see Christ. That's what we see. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. It will be worth it all when we see Christ. Jesus never compromised. He never shouldn't code. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Yeah, yeah, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. And, but, but this is those that receive, receive, receive the word, the seed, in stony places. In other words, they, it, it, didn't, it, it went down a little, but there was something underneath that ground that stopped it from penetrating and taking root. Verse 20. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hear the word, and a non with joy received. They get real happy. You see them, they all up, they happy. They, they can shout with the same. Make up the dance. Shout with the same. They got real happy. They got to dance all day. They made up them a dance that day. They got real happy. But then persecution came. Then suffering came. Then they would have been mocked and teased for the name of Jesus. And they couldn't have it. Remember old yeah. demons? Paul says, Demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. They love the world more than they love the Lord of glory. They love the world more than they love the word of God. Yeah. So when that persecution and tribulation came into their life, because it did not penetrate past the stone that was underneath that shallow ground, they didn't break up that shallow ground enough. They didn't till that ground deep enough. Yeah, they get happy when the preacher said, You can go to heaven. Yeah. 
if you just put your faith in Jesus. But they did not preach. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be trials and afflictions. But if at the end of the road, there's some light at the end of that tunnel. There's some light at the end of that tunnel. Well, they get real happy. They get real happy. I mean, they, they blowing bubbles coming up to the altar. But they bubble gum, they chewing on them. Y'all been there. We've all been there. I, I'm not trying to judge, but I've been to places, and I, and I wasn't trying to be judged, but I'm sitting up here, this person smacking on his gun, blowing bubbles. I don't think they truly, truly understand. I don't believe they truly ready to repent of their sins. I don't believe they're really ready to give up that word. I really don't. They say with joy they receive. They get real happy. Some of these preachers can preach you happy. They know how to preach you happy to get you to be a member of their church. To get you to be a member of their church. And, and But they didn't preach that suffering. They didn't preach that tribulation. They didn't preach that persecution. They didn't preach you got to be willing to give up your mama to follow me. You got to be willing to give up your dad to follow me. You got to be willing to give up your son and your daughter. You got to be willing to give up land and house to follow me. They didn't preach that. They didn't preach that there's going to be sacrifices to follow Jesus. They didn't preach that. So when all that start happening, when this start falling away, when the trials start, when they start losing their job, you promise to take care of me. God would have made a way. He would have made a way. You prom he promised to take care of me. He promised to supply all my needs. God in your heart didn't receive the word of God. He know that word didn't take him. So when all this come in their life, they fall off. They get real happy. Yeah, they get real happy. Verse 21. It says, Yet hath he not root in himself, but dure for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended and they fall away. They fall away. Go real quick to the book of Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Look at what, what the apostle was saying here in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Look at what it says here. I thank God for the word of God. It gives us an understanding of what's going on. Because we sit up and think, one man, they was coming to church. Then all of a sudden, this person passed. They don't come to church no more. Or this happened, they lost their job. They stopped coming to church. They stopped doing this. They don't even talk about Jesus no more. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible lets you know what we read the Bible. And, and, and uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, go there real quick. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. We want to read verse, let's go here to verses, verse 32. Let's start there. Look at what it says. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 32. Look at what it says. Now, these are those who have been grounded and rooted in the truth. Look at what it says. Hebrews 10 chapter verse 32 it says but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated when you were a light when the word of God went forth and it opened up your understanding and penetrated that heart and took root, and you believed and you believed unto salvation look at what it says you endured a great fight of afflictions they were coming at you afflictions was coming off from all directions Partly was you were made a gazing stock. You became a, spect a spectacle to your friends and family members. They started mocking you. Yeah. They started yeah. teasing you. Yeah. They tried to do everything they could to get you to turn away yeah. from that profession you made of Jesus Christ. Then you became a spectacle to them. You mean y'all can't go out to the club no more? What would I want to go to the club? I told you. I know what went on in the club. Ain't that going on in the club but fornication, adultery, yeah. folks getting drunk. Folks ready to fight. How many people have got their heads busted in them clubs? Fornication, adultery, drunkenness, somebody trying to commit adultery on a spouse, somebody trying to sleep with somebody's daughter or somebody's son. Mm -hmm. These yeah. women, something else now. Yeah. <laughs> the men ain't the aggressive now. Ain't the aggressive now. These women just the aggressive now. Yeah. I remember my son was telling me and my wife about this girl he was interested in. And he wanted to get to know her. You know, he had been out of a relationship for a couple of years now and wanted to get to know her. So he went out on a date with her, dropped her back off and everything else. He said when he had called her, her response to him was, you weren't aggressive enough. He was like, what do you mean? You didn't try nothing with me. What type of... <laughs> they want you to be real aggressive with him, I guess, now. What happened to the shame? What happened to... to, 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 to to, I met me a nice guy. He didn't try nothing with me. Yeah. He, he, he liked me for who I am. He was just trying to get, get something from me. Whatever happened to that? You understand? She told him he wasn't aggressive enough. I thank God he decided that ain't the one for me. I 
thank God. Because how many more, how many more men she been out that was aggressive enough? Uh -huh. I thank God. I thank God for it. But look at that. Verse 33. Perfectness. Look at what it says here. Perfectness. You were made a gazing stock by both by reproaches and afflictions. And partly with we became companions of them that were so used. In other words, were mistreated, but they held up. They held up. Now look at drop down. Drop down, verse 35. He said, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which ye have great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. He said, Endure the afflictions, endure the persecution. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Yes, we waiting for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Have patience and wait patiently for the coming Amen. of the Lord. Because he is coming. People always say, I said this once before. Folks say, y'all been saying that for years, but it's closer to today. And when we first believe, and we see the signs happen, that his return is soon to happen. His return is soon to happen. He then gave a sign, the disciples asked, as, as the three part questions. Where shall these things be? Yeah. Show us the sign of your coming and of the end of the world. Can y'all not see the sign that he's coming? Yeah. He is coming. Yeah. So I thank God he is closer today than it was when we first believed. And I thank God for it. He's given us signs. And he gave us signs to believe that he is coming. Verse 37. For yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. It says now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no my soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, because of this persecution and affliction coming, you're going to draw back from God. You're going to turn away from God. You're going to go back out into the world. Let me ask you this. Is that going to make anything better for you going back into the world? That don't, that's never made any sense to me. You're going to turn away from the God that promised to never leave you nor save you. You're going to turn away from the God that promised that I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Why would you leave the God that is able to give you everything that you need to go back into a world that will not eat? You know how messed up the world is? They won't even defend a woman. Y'all heard the story. We talked about it earlier. About the woman in Pennsylvania that was getting raped on a train, mother? Yeah. Everybody on the train sat back and watched that man rape her. Didn't have enough love, didn't have enough care, didn't have enough concern to even try and stop him from raping. But they pulled their phones out so they could sell on social media. And rightfully so, they needed to charge them all. They said they thinking about charging them all. The woman was being raped on a train. And it was a full train, and every passenger on the train sat back and watched him get raped. Yeah. If it wasn't for the uh, conductor calling 911, the man would have got away. Yeah. Would have got away. And now they're talking about charging every passenger on that train. Yeah. Because it did not intervene. It did not intervene. And you're going to turn from the God that is able, the God that loves you, the God that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, the God that said, I am your shield. Ain't no strong, Lord. I am your shield and mother. And I'm your high tower. I'm your fortress. Yeah. You will turn away from God just to go back into a world that does not care anything about you. Stay with God. Yeah. Stay with God. Yeah. Stay with God. Yeah. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. Paul said, I, 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 Paul said, the sufferings of this world cannot compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. The sufferings that you go on through won't be able to compare to the glory that God Amen. is going to reveal and uh, stand with God. Amen. But look at what he goes on to say. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. But look at verse 39. But we, I thank God, we are part of a we. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. That, that word perdition means unto damnation or destruction. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. When trials come, we still believe to the saving of the soul. When persecution comes, we hang up to, to the saving of the soul. The Bible says our soul has been anchored in the Lord. That's what it talks about. We sing that song, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. So when trials try to move me away from the God of glory, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. So when persecution to move me away from the God of God. My soul's been anchored in a little. Yeah. We was on a yacht a couple of weekends ago. And that yacht was a rocking, or was a rocking while it was right, right by that by that dock. But thanks be to God, it had an anchor. Yeah. Keep it from drifting away. Yeah. Keep it from drifting away. And that's how we are. Our soul has been anchored in a little while. Because we have believed yeah. unto salvation. We are those that have believed 
to the saving of the soul. Thank you. But this is why a lot of them, when persecution and all that rises up in their life, they go back out because they had no root. People want to say they were once saved, and then this happened. I say, no, they weren't. Read the Bible. They weren't saved. Amen. If they were truly saved, Come on, they'd still be praising Amen. Him. Amen. If they were truly saved, they'd still be worshiping Him. Amen. If they were truly saved, they'd still be giving Him the glory that they do His name. I had a cousin born the same year that I was born. Had four children, a set of triplets, and a baby girl. And she was dying of an aneurysm, but this is her testimony yeah. according to her tears and her father and her husband. She said while she was dying, I'm still praising him. Yeah. We still praise him. Yeah. Because our soul yeah. has been anchored in yeah. That word has been rooted in our hearts. Yeah. And it's an anchor for our soul. Yeah. It's an anchor for our soul. And this is what they need to understand. This is what they need to understand. Go, go back to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus is explaining this parable. We wonder why folks ain't repenting. We wonder why folks fall back out there into the world. We wonder why other stuff interests them more than, than the things of God. Look at what it says here. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Verse 21. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Now look at verse 22. He also that receives seed among thorns is he that hears the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he become un, becometh unfruitful. In other words, they receive the word. They make a profession of faith, but they got other stuff that's interesting, more interesting, they're more interested in rather than the things of God. Amen. Amen. The thing that I like the way uh, the other gospel put it. Real quick, go to Mark the fourth chapter. The same passage, Mark the fourth chapter, verse eighteen. Go there real quick. Uh, the, this parable is in is the same parable in the book of Mark and also in the book of Luke. Mark the fourth chapter. Go there real quick, verse eighteen. Look at what it says. And it says, "And these are they which are sown among thorns." We're in Mark the fourth chapter, verse eighteen. Such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. In other words, they let so much lust, they got a lust for this man, or a lust for that woman, they got a lust for wealth, they got a lust for money, they got a lust, they got desire for other things. So the word that was sown in their heart, being choked out, being choked out. Why? Because they didn't uproot the weeds of other lust in their heart. Yeah. When you till in the ground, you that when you turn it over that soil, it uproots that weed. That's what's happening with a lot of folks. They have not tilled that ground that which is their heart. They have not tilled that weed of, 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 of riches, desire for riches. They have not tilled up the weed of lust for other things. They have not tilled up the weed of the cares of this life. And that's the reason why when the word of God goes forth, they make a profession of faith. But you'll see them go up. You'll see other things interest them more than the things of God. Whitney Houston, and I'm not trying to condemn, but Whitney Houston is a perfect example of that. She was brought up in the church. She sang in the choir. But somebody heard that beautiful voice of her husband say, you know what? You can be making a lot of money off that voice. Uh huh. The word of God got choked out of her heart. Yeah. The weed for the desires of the lust of riches and other things choked that word out of her heart. Y'all see how she was living after that? Got on drugs and everything. Now she yeah. OD because the word of God was choked yeah. by the weed of riches. It was choked by the lust of other things. It was choked by the cares of this life. Yeah. I don't know if y'all know who Amy Grant is. She's the same thing with her. She was a, a Christian artist. But somebody told you, you need to cross over. You can make a whole lot more money if you just cross over into secular music. Yeah. I'm not condemning all secular music at all. But she figured, I can make more money. But when, but when that lust overtook the word of God, it choked the word of God out of her heart because it was sown amongst thorns. She had other things that she cared about rather than the things of God. And it choked. Yes. Choked yes. it out. What's in your life that's so, that, that's got you so caught up that you will not receive the graphic word of God that will save your eternal soul? That is able to save your eternal soul. And that's what's happening with a lot of these people. The cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches. Chuck the word and he becometh other, becometh unfruitful. Yes. Y'all ever plan? And I know them weeds, them weeds are strong. Yes. 
It takes God to take them weeds out of your heart. It takes the word of God to drive the weeds out of your heart. You better do some weeding and feeding. Amen. The word of God both weeds and it feeds. That's the reason why we're going to keep feeding you with the word of God. We're going to keep weeding this stuff out of your heart. I don't want to see nobody go back out into that world because it ain't got nothing to offer you but death and damnation. They do not care for you all. I don't care what nobody says. We're going to weed and feed. Get your bag of weed and feed. Get your bag of the word and start weed and feed. And the Bible says the weed and the, the, the word is the water. You are fed off and watered by the word. It not, it not only feeds you, it waters you. You better keep getting watered by the word so fruit can grow. So fruit can grow. Stay in the word of God. Yes, that's the reason why we are commanded to continue with doctrine and teaching and preaching and the reading of God's word. That's the only thing that's going to keep the weeds out of your heart is the word of God. But your heart needs to be tilled. Your heart needs to be tilled. That ground needs to be tilled. Verse 22. He also that receives seed amongst thorns is he that hears the word. You back in Matthew? Back in Matthew, the 13th chapter. Verse 22. He also that receives seed amongst thorns is he that hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Now look at verse 23. Ain't that some? I thank God for verse 23. Amen. Thank but you. he that receives seed into the good ground. Is he that hears the word and understands it? I thank God he has illuminated our minds to understand yes. that we are in need of a Savior. Yes. That we are in need of a Savior. You know how many people can't understand our, our, our faith? Because religion has been corrupted by the devil. And believe me, people don't understand it. The devil has, he do not care about religion. He ain't got no problem with religion. He just got a problem with this religion. Uh, this is the only religion he got a problem with. He can, you can believe in anything you want. You know why? Because the devil and his demons came up with all that mess. Yeah. Yeah. Because all religions teach the same thing. You good enough. If you can be good enough, you can make it to heaven. That's what religion teach. God said, you ain't good enough. I got a son that is. Oh, right. All right. Yeah. I'll take your wicked life and replace it with his righteous life. The devil ain't got a problem with religion. He ain't got a problem with religion. Don't you see all those nations that fought against Israel were all religious people? But look at what they were doing. Look at what they were doing. The same thing going on today. They can't understand this religion that we believe in. Pure religion. Undefiled before God and the Father is this. They can't understand how y'all gonna put your faith in a man to die and pay for your sins. They don't understand the man, Christ Jesus, that died. Oh, they don't understand that God requires perfect sacrifice. Yeah. Now, I said it before and I said it again. You ain't it and neither am I. But Jesus, Hallelujah. on that day, Hallelujah. on that day, when he hung on the cross, he sacrificed for our sins. But they can't understand it. I had a brother, I told y'all this before, can't no man die for me. They can't understand how a man can die on their behalf. This was the man, Christ Jesus. This was the man that came down from heaven. Yes. This was the man from eternity past. Yes. This is the man that was always with God. Yes. This is the man that always did those things that pleased his father. This was no ordinary man. This was no ordinary man. So they can't understand it, but we understand it. We understand that we were full of sin. We understand that we have sinned against the Holy God. We understand that we need a payment for our sin. And our blood has been defiled, but there was coming a blood that was so pure. How can man blood? Cleanse my dark soul. Jesus' blood, I think, be the God cleanse us in the eternity of Jesus' blood. And that word is the washboard. By which we can There's nothing wrong with the seed. It's the ground. The seed yeah. is the word. Yeah. The ground is their heart. But thanks be to God yeah. for verse 23. Y'all give the Lord a hand praise. We pray for our son and our daughter and our friends and our neighbor and our poor so that no one out that they will receive the yeah. exact word that is able to 
save their soul. Y'all give the Lord a hand. Ain't nothing wrong with your feet. It's the ground. Ain't nothing wrong with that lawn. That seed that I wanted to plant my lawn with. It was me being laid too lazy to till that ground. But once Brother Larry gave me that advice to turn over that soil and keep planting, it'll spring for I, I, my yard went from a dirt, uh, 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 nothing but a muddy dirt, a little piece of land, to uh, it's full of grass. I thank God. Once yeah. yeah. well, I learned I had to turn that soil and break up that dirt. Don't let the food go in vain. We thank God. And God bless you.